What's up guys, this is the uh, newest version of the Sun Gold 10K Hybrid Inverter. This is SPH 10K 48SP. Uh, this is the latest version. It's got the square screen, rectangular screen down at the bottom. Previous versions have the round screen, but basically the same, same uh, device, same features. Uh, to the right is the uh, Sun Gold 48 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery is the wall mount version. It's the SG48 100M. That's a 51.2 volt 100 amp hour battery. With the Amperlite uh, plugs here. You don't see these often. Configuration I've got going now is pretty straightforward using the uh, plugs that came with it, the cables that came with it. Got my ground coming over to my farthest battery here. Got the BMS communication. Coming out of the RS-485. Over to RS-485A. And then uh, RS-485C bouncing over to RS-485B. Uh, pretty good inverter so far. These Sun Gold products are, are pretty good products. Support and service has been pretty good. They email fairly quickly when I have questions. I'm pretty happy with it. It's got the Pace BMS, which you see on most of the uh, Sun Gold batteries. Uh, a little different display on these than the rackables. There's some controversy about these uh, lithium phosphate batteries being mounted in a, a horizontal configuration like that because they are leaning they're not setting up right so there's a lot of controversy about leakage and stuff out of the top of these in time but you know basically if you're not charging and discharging too quickly i don't think you're going to run into anything like that hopefully for a while uh, there's a display sign time no solar coming in some settings i'm running with this thing i'm, I'm keeping it in uh let's go through the settings real quick for you uh, your setup will be to, uh, be specific to your needs, but I'm running in solar mode, which is uh, solar power's first priority. So utility provides power to the load when solar power is not available, uh, and not and the battery will uh, will run until you lose solar. Um, another important setting. I'm in CSO mode right now, which means I'm allowing the utilities to charge the batteries. I just topped off batteries. With utilities since we've had pretty terrible weather and the panels haven't been able to bring them up so i just brought them all up to 100 first time i've done that in a couple weeks though um, in fact let me go ahead and put that back so we'll select the setting we'll go back to oso mode OSO mode will be only solar charging for the battery. Um, battery type, it's another important one. These wall mounts, I'm using uh, the L16 setting, which is the lithium ion, lithium phosphate ion battery. That's 16 batteries in a series. Um, the BMS is gonna set most of these battery charging settings. So if you look over it, like option 11 is Set to 56.8, which typically by default is 55.2. And that was established once the BMS comms were, were connected. You can change this setting. You can change some of your settings like under voltage warnings, over discharge voltage delay, over or under voltage alarms and things. But the BMS is going to establish those. They won't save. So even if you change this, BM, the BMS is going to, to tell the inverter what settings to use. And those settings won't stay in the inverter. You'll have to actually use pbms tools and change it actually on the bms or disconnect bms comms uh, and then you can change those settings for me i'm allowing the bms to to call the shots uh, when you set up bms comms it's option 32 so when you first unbox it you'll plug up your ethernet cables and over here to 32 uh, set your comms to 485 45 is going to enable BMS on the four uh, RS-485 port, and then also these wall bats use Pylon Tech 
so that would be number 33 um, pilot tech communication and then you won't see communications error anymore you'll get I think an error code 58 when you've got a bad config and uh, you're having problems communicating to comms um, everything else most of these other settings are established by the, uh, the BMS so if you go over to like 35 35 is battery recover discharge under voltage so it's an under voltage recover point so it looks like BMS comms has set it to 53.2 which is dynamic because yesterday it was set to 52.8 so the BMS kind of decides based on what its status is of its individual cell, cells and then what it decides its discharge rates are and its charging rates are and then it will set these settings uh, dynamically so even if you get in here and here I'll show you so let's say it's 53.2 we'll say no it's 53.6 and then we'll go out Go to 35. 53.6. Ah, oh, looks like it actually took that. Let's see. Let's go back to 35 now that it's saved. Oh, I already took that. Well, groovy. All right, so, but yeah, that's, uh, that's this latest model um, from Sun Gold Power. Pretty happy with it, you know. The price point's right. I'll give you some rough measurements here. This bad boy is 17 and a half inches wide, about two feet um, tall, and about five inches, five inches deep off the wall. Looks like I, right now I'm gapping it by about four inches of gap, which. It's a little snug. If you have more space, I wouldn't put them that close because you will have some discharge heat coming out of these. But yeah, not a bad unit. There's not a whole lot of videos of these this equipment online, so if you're thinking about buying it, and you, you know you wanted to see it, um, there it is.